In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Architect Photoshop action and what we're going to do is use this photo to create this in just a couple of steps. I have a few other examples here. Now you can use any shape you want with this action and every shape you use is going to output a completely different design. So there are unlimited options really with this action. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to close these. So we have our photo here. So when you open up a photo, just make sure that your, uh, your layer is set as the background, so it should look like this. If you open up your photo and it doesn't, it's called something else, just go to the layer menu, go to new background from layer, and that will set it as the background. Next, uh, just in the layer panel here, go to this top icon and select panel options. And down the bottom here, just make sure add copy to covered layers and groups are selected. Next, go to the image menu, go to mode, just make sure it's in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel selected. Okay, so now let's go ahead and load up the actions panel. So go to the window menu, go to actions, the panel will appear. Go to the top right hand corner icon and select load actions and just select the architect.atm file and it will appear here. So next what we need to do is create a new layer and just call it brush. It needs to be called brush and must be all lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. Hit OK. And with the brush layer selected, just hit B on the keyboard to get your brush tool out. And select the color, it doesn't matter what color. And you want to start brushing over your photo uh, where you want to apply the effect. So wherever you brush, the effects are going to go out from the middle of that area. Okay. So let me just open up uh, one I did earlier. Here it is. So you can see I've brushed over my model here and all the effects are gonna go around here. All right, so with that done, we just need to uh, click play on the action. And you're just gonna get a little pop up as soon as the action starts. It says, now create a shape. Once you have created a shape, click play on the action to continue. Okay, so that's what we need to do now is create a shape. So you just click stop, and you'll, you'll notice that the action stopped a few steps in, and it's waiting for us to create a shape. So if I just hit U on the keyboard, it gets out our um, shape tool. And so you can click on this panel here, and there's a couple of basic shapes here. But if you select custom shape tool, and just go up to the top here, click on that, you'll see some basic shapes here. And what you can also do is just hit this little cog icon, and you can select all, click OK, and that'll basically load up all Photoshop's basic shapes. Uh, for this example, I'm just gonna use a simple triangle, but in the readme file and the download, um, I've included a list of um, locations where you can download thousands of different shapes. And just in a, as an example, I can just go uh, load shapes. You know, I've just got a couple here. And see so if I scroll down, uh, here's just a few shapes that you could use. I mean, there's thousands out there on the internet. Um, so, and each one of these shapes is going to output a completely different design. So that's what makes this action really fun, is you basically don't know what you're gonna get. Um, so, for this, like I said, we're just gonna use a triangle, so I'm gonna select that. And now I'm just gonna draw out triangle. Now, what's also important with this step is the size of your shape. Uh, if I draw a shape, this triangle and keep it this small, the overall effect is gonna be pretty small. All the design elements you know, aren't gonna take up a large area. If I make it this big, you know, it's gonna fill up our entire canvas and probably be too big. So you wanna get something that just uh, looks right, you know, place it up against your um, your subject and for this example I'm just going to keep it about this size now what I might also do is extend the canvas so we've got a bit more um, space so if I go to image canvas size I'm just going to change this to pixels and bump this up about 400 pixels uh, background color doesn't matter but I'll just choose that okay so now we've got more space and so that's all you need to do now, all we need to do now is select this uh, play button 
and the action is going to finish. So go ahead and do that. Now this action is now going to run for between three and five minutes. So just come back to Photoshop in a few minutes time and the design will be finished and we'll uh, talk about all the different ways we can customize it. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up a new photo and we're going to um, create a design out of that. So I'll fast forward the video now to get to the result. So the action's finished and you can see the result here. Now every time we run the action, it's going to apply this default uh, color grade to the, to the design, but I'm going to talk about all the different ways you can uh, colorize uh, your design. So let's go ahead now and go into the layer panel. But firstly, let's just collapse the architect action. Uh, I'll just minimize that one there as well. And we'll minimize the action panel. And going into the layer panel here, you'll notice that every folder is open. So it's um, created quite a hefty list of layers here. But if you want to quickly collapse all these folders, just with the architect folder selected, which it should be by default, on a PC, hold down Control Alt, and click on that arrow. Uh, it's Command Option on a Mac. Click on that. And what it will do is just uh, collapse all the folders so we have a much neater workflow. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start from the top here, we're going to go through each layer, talk about what it does, and then when we've done that, um, I'm going to open up a new photo, and we're going to um, create a design. Okay, so this top layer here, I've just kept the brush layer hanging around, so if you want to quickly run the action again, just select these, shift select those layers, delete, and you're ready to go. So undo that. So glow spots, for, uh, if we go inside here, we have three different layers, and these are the glow spots. So if I move this one around, actually before I jump into this, if you uh, start moving some layers around and notice it's a little bit slow, it's because of uh, some layer styles applied to layers. So if you want to speed up um, the responsiveness of Photoshop, just select this bottom layer here, background color, uh, right click on the FX symbol and just go hide all effects and that'll just hide all the effects there so things should be a bit quicker. Alright so go back into glow spots folder uh, if you move these around you'll see what they are so you can move them into brighter areas of the, of the design create some hot spots you can also use these adjustment layers above to quickly scrub this slider and create different color glows so if I wanted that color I can copy this value here, Control C, and you know, double click on this, Control V, and then um, Control V, like that. Okay, so they can all be moved around. If you want to duplicate them, you could say Shift select those, and if I hold down Alt, click and drag down, that duplicates the uh, layers. So we've just boosted the brightness of uh, those glows there. Okay, so that's the Glow Spots folder. Now going inside, the next one is called Color. If I turn this one off, you can see that this uh, folder houses the initial um, color grade to the design, so let's go inside. Top layer here, we have Add Contrast. By default, it's set to 30%. If you just click on this word opacity, drag to left and right, you can see what that does. So I like to start off at zero, click and drag and to the right, slowly increase that to get something that you're happy with. Uh, layer below, use original photo color. If you tick this one on, what it will do, it'll overlay the original colors of your photo. So the blend mode of this layer is set to color. Now if I set that to normal, you'll see, uh, apart from the glows, it's gonna overlay all these colors on top of the design, just like that. So it ignores everything else but the colors of that layer. <coughs> Turn that one off. Uh, overall color tint. Uh, this one just applies an overall tint to your photo, uh, to your design if you want to use it. So you can use this handle here, drag this one around. Uh, you can apply the color. You could use this drop down menu and sort of um, scrub through these to uh, apply some different colors. So I'll hide that one. Overall saturation. If you double click on this one, by default I've just bumped up the overall saturation of the design. You can turn that down, um, do what you want there. Color options, if you go inside this folder, 
Um, I've created about 17 different color variations and what you can do with these is just simply turn the visibility on and off for different uh, different layers and what I like to do with these is uh, rather than using them as a hundred percent opacity you can you know scrub the opacity maybe you want to use just a little bit of that layer and then turn on uh, say layer 3 scrub the opacity of that one use a bit of that color so you can really uh, go ahead and blend different um, colors here to create a look that you want now this layer here use a solid color if you turn this one on it'll fill the entire design a color of your choice so you can just double click on this box and you know mess around with some of those turn the one off now by default the color uh, from this action is generated from these two layers in yellow uh, if you double click on this one here it's called base color gradient in a break so, so the color is generated from this gradient here and if you wanted to um, be more specific you could just double click on this and you know, click on some of these if you want to get into more detail with the color uh, but what I like to do is I just cancel that so you, that is an option you can play around with those or you could use this one here randomized base color so it's just a hue and saturation adjustment layer again you can just drag this one around to get a feel for different colors all right so you can um, so I might go for a green and then you could use so one thing to notice about uh, this layer below is that the blend mode is set to hue so if even if I double click on this adjustment layer and drop the saturation down um, oh sorry the yeah the saturation you notice that it's not actually doing anything until I get to zero so um, if you want to just decrease the saturation a little bit go to this top one um, overall saturation and use that one just like that okay so it's just a handy one to remember so that's the color options there are some more color options I'll get to in a sec so uh, let's go inside the architect folder Oops. and let's go through all these layers so uh, the top folder here we have foreground blurred shapes so if I um, just move this folder around you can see it's just those couple of shapes you can see it, it's the triangles they sit on top of everything so it sort of gives it that uh, appearance of some gives it some depth and if you go inside the roll on individual layers and um, just one thing to remember is with uh, with these hue and saturation adjustment layers if I use this and adjust that you notice it's not actually just in the color it's because the color is set within this top folder here so if you want to have more control um, over the color of elements you can turn off this this color folder and then um, just simply mess around with the slider here or rather than turn off the whole folder you can just simply turn off these two layers here uh, because you might still want to you know mess around with uh, these ones here Alright, so let's go back into here. Uh, so the next one down is glowing shape over photo. So I might actually just turn this one back, uh, back on. Uh, glowing shape over photo. So whatever shape you use to run the action with, when it's finished, it's going to create a copy of that shape and um, sit it over the top of your photo. Uh, you can see there. So you can. Uh, do you know you can scale that you could hold down alt click and drag it'll quickly duplicate it so you can move that uh, move that one around scale it so you can build up the design even more if you want to uh, okay so light streaks over photo this is a subtle layer it sees if I move it around you can see it's just those diagonal lines um, again you can just alt, whoops, alt click and drag duplicate it to make those lines a bit more prominent so the one uh, this layer here in yellow this is our photo layer so you can see that there um, now this one I like to use the layer mask for because as you would have noticed when I was turning this on and off you can see um, some outlines of your photo sitting underneath but where you want to uh, use this mask if you click onto this mask here hit B on the keyboard grab a black brush 
and if you just brush into that mask it will temporarily hide it so you can actually reveal those outlines underneath so you can sort of brush it on and um, you know in a couple of areas to add a bit more variation to the uh, to the look of your design okay so uh, next layer down is randomized elements color uh, if I double click on this one and drag this slide around you notice that that's not really doing anything it's because once again the colors are set inside this top folder now what you can do here is if you select um, this layer here the base color gradient if you drop the opacity down just a little bit you know we're going to reveal um, the color within the architect folder so then you can sort of grab this layer here and drag that around to add some even more variation uh, to the color Okay, so that's a cool one to play around with. I'll just turn this passage back up. And same with this one here, use gradient color. If you turn that one on, you can just double click on here and mess around with some color gradients to mix things up a bit more. Photo outlines, this is the one that sits underneath your photo. So if I move this one around, uh, so that's a good one to keep, keep around um, when using that uh, layer mask okay next one down glowing elements now when I've run the action I like to quickly flick this one on and off because you'll notice that when I turn it off you get a completely looking design it brings a lot more detail into the background uh, but in most cases you want to keep some of the glow elements hanging around because it looks pretty cool so if you go inside um, I've set up a bunch of different layers here so what I like to do is just flick them all off and turn them on one by one from the bottom and you can see what they are firstly and you notice that they're just really subtle glow effects um, some you may want some not so look I think well I might keep that one move it around a little bit I think that looks pretty cool so um, that's how I would suggest you use that one. Just quickly flick it on and off and identify which layers you want. And don't forget, once again, you can duplicate it, rotate it. I'll flip this one um, vertically. You can move it around um, to create even more effects. So going on down, we have broken parts. If I move this one around, it's just little cutouts from, uh, from the design, which you can, you know, you can move around. Again, duplicate, move it to the side, um, lots of options. So this one here, liquid, liquid drops, if I move this one around, similar to cutout, but this one actually has layer styles applied. Now, if you remember, we've hidden um, all the effects, uh, just so things move around a bit quicker. But if I, um, if I right click here on the FX symbol and go show all effects, now move it back out again, you'll see that um, it has a bit of a layer style applied to it gives it that liquid look so you can you know move that to the side uh, you can scale it um, get creative with that layer I'm going to hide the effects again uh, by default this one's turned off it just adds, if I turn the one on, it just adds some angular lines all over the place so uh, it's just a couple of layers inside there that you can mess around with light streaks now this one uh, this folder sits below um, a lot of elements so if you move that one around you can see it's those subtle lines just for a bit of added detail uh, you can uh, if you, you can even duplicate these folders you can just alt click and drag again and that will duplicate that uh, going on down, underlined photo cuts. This one just sits on the bottom. Uh, it's just your photo cut up in different places and it just adds a little bit to the overall effect. Shapes set one. So this one has a bunch of the shapes, uh, the triangle that we use to build the action. That just sits at the back there. So don't forget, you can go inside here and move all these around. Duplicate them. Uh, okay, so that's that one. Squares pattern, I'll move this one to the side. That's just that texture, sits below everything, 
just adds a bit of detail. Now this one, texture fill, this is an interesting one to uh, play around with. So if I turn this folder on and off, you can see that it creates, if I'll, I'll move it to the side, uh, and you'll see that it's that texture there. I'll just hide the layer mask. Um, so each time you run the action, it, it generates this unique texture. Sits below everything to make things just pop out a bit more. Um, it's made like a black, black mat behind everything. So you can keep that one around, but you might want to just flick it on and off to see if it looks better with it off. So that doesn't look too bad, but I like the way the black's sort of bringing out uh, a lot of detail here. You can also just double click on this uh, box here and change the tone of that. So I can make it white, pitch black, or you know adjust that. So for this, we'll keep it pretty dark. Okay, next one down, flowing textures. Go inside here. This one has two different layers set up. I'll move it to the side so you can see. So this is kind of like um, a liquid effect that's generated. And this, you know, when you hide all the effects, um, it hides this latest effect as well. You can see the FX symbol. So if I right click and go show all effects, you can see that it's applied that layer style to there. So I'll just hide it again. So what I like to do with these is just like, you know, move them around uh into different areas you can even duplicate it and i'll rotate it 90 degrees so you can have some splashes hanging out the side there uh just undo that okay so that's those uh square grids you'll see in the background here i'll move the folder out to the side so every time you run the action it creates uh this this square pattern sits below everything uh, you can, you know, color those, move them around. Uh, angled block lines. This one, so it's just a subtle effect. It sits behind everything, so you might want to just, you know, just move this folder around, move it to the side a bit. Just adds a bit, a little bit more detail. 3D motion lines. I'll move this one to the side. Uh, this one, you might want to try duplicating a few times to make it a bit more prominent. Uh, so. You, you'll see the effect there. If I duplicate the layer, you see it creates this kind of 3D look from the shape that you use to run the action. So try duplicating that layer a few times, see what you get. Move that one around. Now this layer below, shape edge lines. This one here is a cool one to mess around with. It's basically um, the shape that you use, it combines it a few times, create a, creates a pattern and um, really highlights the edges of it. So you can move this one around, I'll flip it vertically, you can scale it. Uh, and what I also like to do is that you can, if you want to remove the white, just uh, set the blend mode to multiple. So that way we just have some, some cool looking lines and move around. Shape sets two, uh, shape set two, uh, just more shapes. I'll move this folder around. So again, there's just a bunch of layers in there you could move around to have more control. And the bottom one here, background color, if I hide this layer, it falls down onto our original background, original photo. You can see that that area around the edge is where we extended the canvas, but uh, if I wanted to just keep um, the area of our photo, I could select that and crop it, just like that. But I wanted that extra room, so we'll just turn that on. And I also like to just um, you know play around with this, check it out in full white, because uh, that could look pretty cool. Check it in a darker color, okay? And if you want your own background, just turn those two off. So now the entire design is on a transparent background, so we can export that as a PNG, reopen it, and then sort of drag uh, a photo into the background there. Okay, so that's all the layers uh, you have to mess around with. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna open up another photo. Uh, we're gonna run the action, and I'm just gonna um, go through the workflow that I use to create some of these results, and uh, we'll create something cool. Okay, so now I have opened a new photo and we're going to go through the process now of um, 
get into the results. So uh, I've created my layer called brush and I have just uh, brushed over where I want to apply all the effects around. So that done, I'm just gonna cl uh, click play on the action. And again, we'll have this pop up telling us to create the shape, so click stop. I hit U to get the shape tool out. I'm going into my custom shapes up here, and I'm just going to just going to select uh, one of these and draw out the shape. Um, and just another thing, it doesn't matter where you um, create the shape; it's always going to be around the center uh, of the area that you brush. So you just want to get the size right. So that's looking. Yep, that'll do. Alright, so let's play and I will just uh, fast forward the video now and we'll go from the result. Okay, so we have our result and again you can see the default colors applied. So uh, now I'm going to just minimize the actions panel, go into the layer panel. Now what I like to do firstly is mess around with the colors. So I'll go into the color folder and I'll just double click on this randomized base color and I'll just get a feel for what um, color direction would work best for this photo. Uh, the purple is pretty cool. I kind of liked uh, the yellow as well. But we'll go with purple for this one. And I'm just going to then jump over to the overall saturation and just adjust this handle uh, just a little bit. Uh, take a look at the saturation. I think that's okay. Uh, now I'm just going to jump to the color options and just go down the line here, flick these on and off. Uh, that's pretty cool. I just and what I like to do is because there's so many, I'll just quickly rename uh, something. To, uh, it doesn't matter to anything, so I just know which ones uh, I like the look of. That's kind of cool. It works with the, uh, the pink tones. That's cool. Just adjust the opacity of that one. And I'll just check it combined with this one. I'll turn the opacity down. I think that works pretty good. So we'll just lock in those uh, those two. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the glow spots folder. I'm just going to move some of these around. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to hide all the effects because it's a little bit sluggish. So I'm just going to go hide all effects uh, and we'll turn that back on towards the end. So I'm just going to move these around. Now, I want to change the color of these. Currently, it's orange, so I want to maybe get like a blue. Uh, something like that. I'm just going to just duplicate these layers and then shift select those two, Alt, click drag, move those down, shift select them, that's alright there I think, uh, this one, keep up there, I'll just randomize the color, oops, randomize the color of this one, just duplicate that again, I might shift select those ones, go control E to flatten it, uh, set that to add and I'm just going to scale that down a bit just like that uh, that'll do for the moment I think so let's go inside the architect folder now and I'm just going to think that photo uh, sorry that um, graphic whoops that graphic scene over our photo there looks quite good so I might leave that there uh, I might just alt click and drag control T to scale I might just see what it looks like with a duplicate, I'll duplicate it again might move one up into here scale it I'll flip it vertically for a bit of variation that looks good light streaks over photo, I can subtly see them so I'm just going to alt click and drag again down to increase the opacity that's probably too much, so I'll adjust the opacity of that layer oh look, it probably doesn't there, so I'll just, I'll just turn it off alright, so I'm going to now select our um, photo layer mask, I'm going to hit B, get our uh, black brush out 
I'm going to start brushing over the photo here so we can reveal some outlines underneath. And his shoelace look pretty good. His pants. I might keep this other shoe on. So a quick way to flick between um, brushing out areas and bring them back on is hitting X on the keyboard. It flicks between uh, black and white here. So when I when I have it on white, I can bring it back in. I'll hit X, flicks it to black. I can brush uh, brush away just like that. Okay. Uh, next. Let's go down, so we'll keep that one. Now I'm going to flick this one on and off, see what we're, what it looks like with the glow elements off. Now in this case, I think all the layers work really well. Uh, so I'm going to keep those on. Broken parts, looks just subtle. It's sitting there, it looks good, so we'll keep that. The liquid drops, I like to experiment with just moving around a bit. I might move this one up to follow his hand up in that direction. And I'll quickly preview that. I'll right click and go show all effects. And you can see the layer styles now uh, being turned on. So I'll just hide that again. Angular lines, I'll flick this one on and off. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, look, I'll just keep it off. Light streaks, uh, I'll just leave that one as it is. I actually might try and move it up a little bit. Side here, just like that. Uh, I'll keep that layer. I'll just have a quick experiment with moving some of these around, uh, but I think it should be all looking pretty. Uh, I'll move that up there. That can stay there. I think that's all looking pretty good. Uh, the squares pattern, I'll flick it on and off quickly to see its influence. Very subtle, I'll leave it. Texture fill, now I know this is looking quite prominent, so I'll turn this one on and off to see the effect. So you can see it's quite um, dramatic, the effect there. But what I might do is just um, double click on the color. I might make this a little bit lighter. Um, oh look, I think it's okay, we'll leave that on. Uh, the flowing textures, now, I want to mess around with these a little bit, so I'll just move that into the air. I'll try to flip it uh, vertically quickly to see if that might look any better. No, I'll just keep it, just undo that. I'll keep that there. Now this other one, move this one down the bottom, that's probably a bit too much. Flip it vertically. No, but I'll just keep that there. What I might do, I might just shift select these two and alt click and drag to duplicate. I might flip this 90 degrees. Uh, and just gives it a little bit of um, effect out the side there. And going on down, I'm just going to uh, grab this one move it up the top a bit so it sort of follows the direction that he's pointing 3d motion lines i'm going to turn this one on and off now you see if you look to the top left hand uh, side here you can see that's trying to create a 3d effect out of the the shapes yeah so what you can do you can actually move this layer and sit that right on top of the shape um so that way it actually looks like a real 3d effect if i just control j uh duplicate that layer you see it keeps stacking that effect up. But that's probably a bit too much. I'll turn that one off. Just keep that nice and subtle. And shapes that's too, I'll probably just leave that how it is. Uh, the background color, I'm just going to quickly check this in pure white. Uh, looks pretty cool. Black. No, I think this one works on the lighter end of things. Uh, Oh uh, look, I think that'll do. And I'm just going to go back up the top here and adjust, check out the contrast. And I'm going to then check out a bit of overall tint, just quickly. Just 
probably three days. Uh, I don't think it really needs it, but it's worth checking out. Okay, so look, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so that's it. Uh, that gives you an idea of my uh, workflow when using this action. And yeah, just keep, keep uh, in mind that whatever shape you use, you're gonna get a completely different result. And um, it only takes a couple minutes of experimenting with the layers to really come up with some really cool results. And one thing I've just forgot is just to turn on the effects again. And you can see that now that looks pretty cool. Okay, so, you know, I've created this essentially in under 10 minutes and I could pump out, you know, heaps of different designs within the hour just using different shapes. All right, so have fun using the action if you decide to download it and uh, just contact me if you need any help using it. Okay, thanks.